All right. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. And uh, let's see. All right. Fourth of July, America, uh, talking about freedom. Well, it's great to celebrate freedom. Now, they call it Independence Day because we were uh, independent from the rule of Britain. And so they started a new country with freedom. Well, praise God. And my, my grandparents, you know, they came over from Mexico. And my dad said they did not want to go back. There was a lot of killing in Mexico, and they were really glad to be here. And on my mom's side, they had English, Irish, Dutch, and German. Uh, and she, I guess, so my mom had a grandmother that actually had an English accent. So praise God. We, we have a lot of mixture in America. Now, there was mixtures going on from, uh, man, 2,000 years ago. When you think we just did the Thess Thessalonians, well, in Thessalonica, that was quite a port because that was on that uh, road, the a Roman road, so you had a port, uh, and the, so you'd have the military going through there uh, from uh, Greece area to Macedonia. And so there was a lot of mixture there. When you think about the histories of people being mixed, uh, it is vast. And so, you know, I've been seeing some memes, stuff on Facebook that, um, that, that the Bible, that there weren't whites in the Bible. And check that out, and I'm waiting. And yeah, well, the truth is, yeah, there was plenty of whites in the Bible. There's only one race, actually. God made one people, and they're all shades of color. Uh, so it, it's amazing. If you look at genetics, even in Europe, a lot of the people you might call white uh, have a lot of Asian background in there. And uh, what else? Well, even genetically, when you look at the Indians that are here, like, hey, if you want to go back and, and uh, do things like the ancestor did, how would you like to go back to some of my ancestors that were Aztec? Well, no, th they would still be capturing hundreds a day for sacrifice and cutting their hearts out while they're still alive. No, that'd be stupid. Who wants to go backwards into idiocracy. We should be going forward with more. Now, uh, so anyway, a couple of thoughts there. Oh, about the Indians that are here that we are familiar with. Um, you know, you got a lot of tribes here, but genetically when you start looking at that and go to Answers in Gen Genesis, they just did a lot of work on genetics and searching those. You will see that there's a thought now that the Indians that are actually known here now were not the first wave that came over here. There were others came here and then they were either wiped out, they don't know how, by war or possibly this, this other wave of peoples that came from uh, um, the Asians before that they ended up wiping the others out with warfare or disease. So. Everybody wants to blame somebody, and everybody wants a handout for something. Uh, well, you know what? You're going to have to choose God or choose the devil, because the devil is always going to do something that's evil, and don't be so darn manipulated. Uh, just follow God and do God. So we go from independence to dependent, dependent on Jesus Christ and what He's done for us. And so... That's where we are blessed to be in a nation where we do have freedom. I know from my backgrounds with my family, they all knew we, we have that kind of blessing. Um, I've got a lot of Filipino family. They are all happy to be here because, hey, they were under Marcos before. They know what it is to be under a dictatorship. Uh, and they know what it's like to have curfews and you go out, you'll be shot, things like that. So they are all happy to see the American flag, to see everybody coming together. Uh, but ultimately, the one thing that brings everybody together is Jesus Christ to one family, because the things of this world will not last. The things of this world are perishing, but God has a whole beautiful place and a plan for you and your life that He started right from the beginning of Genesis. You know that tree of life, that we can eat of. Jesus Christ is that tree with leaves for healing and with fruit every month. So there is uh, all this abundance coming from Him so we can walk abundantly in life 
and he said, I will give you life and life more abundantly. And so that we would be bountiful. And what are we bountiful with? Faith, which is trust in him and love and hope. We have a hope to look forward to, uh, which him, him coming back and he will come back. And uh, we have read, like we did just in 2 Thessalonians, what it would be like when he comes back. In 2 Peter chapter 3, we also read what it'd be like. Uh, I think that was, we started around 3 verse 9, what it would be like when he comes back. But uh, anyway, speaking of freedom, I wanted to read John 8. Uh, where could we start there? Um, well, then the Jews, or well, what did they say? Uh, where should we start? Um, well, John 8, that's where they, let's see. Oh, let's start. Well, let's look at 12. John 8, verse 12. Then spake, the, spake Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Well, they should know what this is talking about because the Old Testament was talking about this, uh, that he would be coming as the light. Uh, so anyway, it goes on. Let's pick it up again. Um, let's start at verse 25. Then said they to him, Who are you? And Jesus said to them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as the Father has taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Praise God. Look, if you're with Jesus, you are not alone. God is with you. If you know the Son, you know the Father. Uh, praise God. I thank God for that because how many people have turned to Jesus and they've been on their own? Um, wow, I've got a good story about that. I'll have to tell you. Okay, as he spoke these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So, all right, do you abide in his word? Are you his disciple? Praise God. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. See, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How say you that ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin, the slave of sin. So, yeah, you are not held to be a slave of sin. Let Jesus set you free. Praise God. He set you free from sin. Do you know what freedom is? No. Do you know that freedom? No. You can have that old yoke taken off. Put on His. It's light. All right. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And we know about the son because we know Psalms 2, that those of the world, they war against God and against his anointed, against his son and the king in Psalms 2, written a thousand years before Jesus by King David. And that was by the Holy Spirit. I know that you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. See. The word that Jesus speaking has no place in them, not at all. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you've seen from your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you to the truth. Well, see, they can't even hear the truth. Their ears are shut here, aren't they? Yeah, well, Abraham was looking forward to that city that would be built by God. And uh, those who God call are precious to him, precious to God, precious stones fit together, uh, praise God, as a temple of God, a holy place. Okay, okay, uh, 41. You do the deeds of your father. Then say they to him, We be not born of fornication. 
we have one Father, even God. Well, see, fornication, uh, not, they're not faithful in uh, who they should have been faithful to, uh, who they should have been the wife to. They weren't faithful at all. No, God said they're like a, a harlot. Well, Jesus freed the one that they accused of being a harlot. They themselves are the harlot. Okay, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceed forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you, don't, you not understand my speech? Because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. For he's a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? And I say the truth. Why do you not believe me? He that is of God hears God's words. You therefore hear them not because you're not of God. Yeah, praise God. Well, God came against these things. See, um, he destroyed. You know, when you look at the histories, I got that on the other side of Israel. Uh, so many times they... They had been rescued from, by God, raised up uh, to speak the truth, but they would go back. You know, uh, like Jesus said, the dog goes back to its vomit. Uh, the pig, uh, it will go back to the mire, back to the mud hole. You can wash it off all you want. But see, they had been, even they, they were supposed to have been the ones that were clean. They're like the unclean, going back to the mud hole. Uh, and so, anyway, let's move on here. Uh, yeah, they were like a harlot. Then 48, and the, then answered the Jews and said to him, Say we not well that you are a Samaritan? See, they didn't like the half-Jews. These Jews were very selective. They didn't like even the half-Jews. Uh, and you have a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you do dishonor me. And I seek not my own glory, there is one that seeks and judges. Verily, verily, I say to you, if a man keeps my sayings, he shall never see death. Well, praise God. Well, I think that's basically where we can stop that and look at that one. Now, I want to show you something else. All right, let's, um, if I can do this without pulling that over. Now... Now, the book of Isaiah, I went over the book of Isaiah. And so if you go back and look at my videos, you can see the book of Isaiah. But um, this basically shows, and you can see such contrast, where these guys are in darkness, but then that fountain of living waters was going to be coming, what they were looking forward to. And Isaiah shows clearly the Christ in many, many ways. Uh, so uh, just taking a look at that. Now, the light of the world, Jesus Christ, who came into darkness, but the darkness understood not. Yeah, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But anyway, you see where, uh, I don't know, it's probably hard to see. Now, can you see this? Can you see the wolf and the lamb lay together, the leopard and the kid goat? I don't know if you can see that. But you know, the clean and the unclean would come together when he came. Uh, so that's in, in the book of Isaiah. Uh, now, I'm going to go to a certain one. Let's go to Isaiah 42. That's a good one. And so you can go back and uh, I have did videos on the book of Isaiah if you want to learn that book and... Maybe that can help you. So uh, just to get a, a basic view of Isaiah, and then you can uh, keep reading. Now remember, you want to go through uh, those five major prophetic books and remember what you can, uh, the letters you can rem remember those books, I, Jed. So what's the I? Isaiah. What's the J? Jeremiah, who also did Lamentations. So that gives you three books. And then you just got E for who? Ezekiel. And D for Daniel. All right. Now, Isaiah 42. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. 
I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. So see, this was going to go to where it would go, and it had to go to the Jews first, because that was everything of this is Jewish prophets looking forward to. Man, they were resting in that hope, looking forward to it, just like we that uh, are not Jew, and I mean believers, because it says those who, uh, in John 1 and 2, those who uh, don't believe that Jesus is the Christ come in the flesh is anti-Christ. Any people in the world, Jew or Gentile, you, you're anti-Christ. All right. Okay, so anyway, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. Now, you'll notice this. It starts out there, and then it kind of gets louder. Uh, and so you, you see how Jesus was, and then how he ended up turning over those tables and driving people out of the temple. And then until finally he said, hey, your house has been left to you desolate. Uh, so that's where you saw on that poster there, that left side, where he came into darkness. Those guys are desolate. You need living waters. See, the woman at the well, she had that kind of water there. Uh, but you can have the living waters. You can get dunked in that water, turning your life over to Jesus, having Him pay for your sins so you can be brought back up new with no guilt on you because it went on Jesus. And you can be risen up in new life in Jesus Christ. All right, let's go on. Verse 3, a bruised reed shall he not break and the smoking flax shall he not quench he shall bring forth judgment unto truth he shall not fail nor be discouraged isn't that great not to be discouraged not to be separated from courage dis means separation uh no and you will not be separated from courage if you got the holy spirit of god till we have set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law Remember he said, abide in his word. Thus said God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he has spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and the spirit to them that walk therein. See, God is a creator. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. See, he made all things. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. See how we have that light that came into the world? A light to the Gentiles. So, see, he's a light that came into the world. Praise God. And, uh, and remember how we just went through Thessalonians and we saw that the children of light, uh, those of the day, not of the night. See, we are of the day of that light. See, we can see where we're going. These people that have rejected God, that their father is a devil, they can't even see where they're going. In fact, they get more deluded and more drunk, and uh, they devour one another. Now, we're told, watch what we're doing. Uh, don't go back into the old ways, and we'll devour one another too. All right. Anyway, so a light of the Gentiles, praise God, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the dark prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house, praise God. Verse 8, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Now back here, uh, where it was that light to, I forgot that, a new covenant. See, Jesus is the one who brought a new covenant, a covenant that goes right to the heart, not one put on stone. Do I have that there? See, on the other side, you'll see Abraham and Moses. Uh, they were looking forward to God. And uh, Moses had that, that laws written on stone, but God wanted us to have it written on our hearts. Nine, behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise from the end of the earth, ye that go down to the sea and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages of Kedar doth inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. 
See, this wilderness is getting light. This wilderness is getting living waters that are flowing out to it. The believer is being filled with living waters, and those living waters are flowing out from the belly, out all over to a great distance. Uh, remember where you see the waters coming out of the temple in Ezekiel? Go to Ezekiel. That's a great book. I've got videos on that to kind of walk you through. Uh, that water's coming out of the temple of God. Uh, it starts out ankle deep and then to the knee, then to the hip, and then you can't even wade across it. All right. So we're singing to the Lord. All right. Verse 11, we went through that. 12, let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. And he shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Well, we'll see how it starts out quiet and then it comes to a roar. Well, Jesus Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Boy, that one roars from on high, doesn't he? All right. So he prevails against his enemies. See, these ones that are trying to keep everybody captive, and they're captive of the devil theirself. Yeah, they're just uh, low-level demonic, uh, but the devil's got them under submission. They're under submission, bowing the knee to the devil. They want to do the deeds of the devil. They'll, the fruit from them will be of the devil, but the fruit from us should be good, doing good, and love, and faith, and uh, perseverance, and patience. All right, uh, we'll keep going here. All right, verse 14, I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Wow, look at how God has been so patient. He's still patient now so that more people can know of Him and be saved. Teach your children, raise your children up, knowing the Word of God. You got to know the Word of God yourself, and uh, man, I pray uh, to God Almighty that you will have the patience and the understanding to get into His Word, to know it. Because uh, I tell you what, the kids ask questions. They're not dumb. They are smart. And uh, you got to have a, an answer for those kids to tell them. All right. I have, uh, where are we at? So he refrained himself. Now uh, will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. Now, what is this? He's going to cry like a woman in labor. Well, because he's birthing something. He's birthing uh, this out where people can turn to him. New children coming in. New children. So this is a new family. Uh, there's no Jew nor Gentile. And this means believing Jew nor Gentile. You got to be a believer. You got to trust in God Almighty. Trust a man as a snare to your foot. No set on that branch that is the righteous branch, the Lord our righteousness. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all of their herbs, and I will make their rivers islands, and I will dry up the pools, and I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. See, the Lord will never leave you, never forsake you. Praise God that you can be anywhere, even if it's just you. You can have Jesus Christ, you can have the Holy Spirit, and you can have fellowship with Him. They shall be turned back, they shall be greatly ashamed. Well, who's going to be greatly ashamed? That trust in graven images that say to the molten images, ye are, are our gods. Well, you want to go back in paganism, you want to worship Thor? Uh, you want to start doing sacrifices again? That ain't going to get you anywhere. Uh, you got to carve those images from a dead tree. It's already a dead tree. Then you got to make it up yourself. And then you've got to sign all these things to it. Uh, well, what are you, who are you going to call on to do it? Spirits of demons to come and uh, knock? What can a spirit of demon do? Oh, spirit, what, what's the most they can do? Maybe blow something over? Maybe... Uh, knock on a window. Heck, I can go kick that over harder than any demon can. Um, no, you need the living God. You need the living waters because th those things of the devil will lead to death and captivity. The things of God lead to life and righteousness. See, that's where it's good for our children, grandchildren, uh, and anybody that wants to live life eternally uh, for good. Okay. Verse 20, is that where we're at? 
No, 19. 18. Hear ye deaf, look ye blind that you may see. Who is blind but my servant? Well, see, Israel should have been following God, but there were few that came out. Few. Just like there are few that come out of the Gentile world, right? Few out of both. So, yeah. Look ye blind that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant? Or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfected? See, he sent Israel. They were to be a light as a nation to share the gospel. Uh, some of them did. Most did not. All right. Um, blind is he perfect and blind as the Lord's servant. Okay. Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he hears not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. See, he took that from the law of stone to a law that was set on our hearts. Wow, he magnified it, uh, made it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for prey, and none delivereth. See, they had no deliverer. None. That's why they were all looking forward to Jesus coming in, that light that would come in. For a spoil and none saith restore. See, nobody was saying restore, that have all this stuff restored. But Jesus Christ came so that we could have life, so we could have restoration, so we could be redeemed. Uh, awesome. All right. Verse 23, who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? See, they were sinning against God himself. For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. See, Jesus is saying, you need to abide in my words to be my disciple. Unless you forsake all that you have, you can't even be my disciple, Jesus said. Therefore he has poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. And it has set him on fire round about, yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. See, that's why we got to lay this to heart, praise God, that uh, we can lay to heart everything that Jesus has done and we can continue to buy, abide in him. Now, oh man, I saw something great today. I saw a testimony of a Muslim lady, Somalia. Okay, she went from Somalia to Sweden, her and her husband. They had two kids there in Sweden. And she's Muslim. Her whole family, Muslim. And you know, Muslims are uh, very close. They're really close. Uh, like a lot of people, they're very close. And so if they do a business, everybody, and you always support everybody. Well, uh, you know, she... Anyway, as a child, she was going to where she would learn the word of the Quran. But one of the teachers, as she was a little girl, only like seven or eight, took her wood tablet and hit her on the head. And she had blood running all over. And anyway, she, she never went back. But her whole family, they would read the word, and her mom was a teacher. Uh, but Okay, so then they're in Sweden, and she was watching videos, and she thought, well, she'd be uplifted, you know, with the word of the Quran and everything. And they were happy and everything and they had a guy there well anyway they went and they took and they cut his head off right there on the camera she was so shocked she said how could they do this they're supposed to be holy and they cut a man's this man's head off and it just hit her she says no this is the devil and she turned from that and uh she was just crying and she turned from it all she was decided she was going to be atheist and and um uh still she she said God, and she was speaking in her own Somalia language instead of uh, Arabic, uh, because they usually do it Arabic. But anyway, how could this be? But anyway, she got a dream of see seeing this one in white that came to her. And later she asked her husband when he came back, and he was a taxi driver, uh, what this was, who this was, and they didn't know who it was. But anyway, the next day she was um, her mom asked her to read something in the Quran and she read it but what she said was uh, I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except by me that's what she said and she didn't even know this but she said it and she was surprised when it came out of her but anyway when she went and looked it up she found 
that that was from the Bible of Jesus. And she had another dream and he came to her and she turned to Jesus and she turned, uh, began to follow Jesus. And she was the only one in her family and even her own mother wanted her dead. Her own mother, who she loved, she loved her whole family. Even her own mother said that, no, she had to die because uh, that was the only way. You either leave Jesus or you die. So she, on her own, she had no one else. She had God and the Holy Spirit with her as she had to go from that. But anyway, thank God that her husband ended up coming from that. And so then they both began to minister the things of the Lord to the Somalia community. And it started off where it was just them. And then it happened to be where there was three of them. And then they go another year and then a few more and then another year until I think she set up to 300. But praise God, you are never alone. You've got Jesus Christ. You've got the Holy Spirit. So praise God. Uh, you have been set free, and who the sun sets free is free indeed. So, uh, yeah, we've got the one. Uh, we continue to serve him, and uh, we can uh, stand encouraged and stand steadfast so that when he comes back and judges and renews the whole earth, you know, he's going to be saying, Well done, good and faithful servant. Praise God.